Hello everybody, how are you all today? Happy Friday. Uh, we're back again. Here we go again. One o'clock and I'm here uh, in my dining room again um, as ever. It's still a beautiful sunny day, although the wind's really quite cold. So um, yeah, it is a bit cold. How's everybody doing? Anybody there today? Please do say hello if you, uh, if you are. Hi Marion. Marion's there. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be doing some Manx patchwork today. Um, and I'm going to give everybody sort of just a couple of minutes just to get online. I've got roped Drew in again. Drew's going to be my cameraman. Um, so he's going to be filming me. Um, so yeah, so um, just while we wait for everybody kind to get online and, and join us, um, what I thought I would do. Hi, Jen. Um, is just remind everybody about um, our Stir Crazy. Hi, Linda. Stir Crazy um, raffle. OK, so it's on our website. Um, it's a 200 pound prize, some of it, some of which we've chosen, some of which you'll choose yourself uh, and it's five pound a ticket. So if you go onto our website um, and look for Stir Crazy Raffle, there are a few destinations left. Um, about half so far have already gone. There's only 40 tickets available. Hi, everybody. Hi, Eileen and Je uh, Gina's there and Linda. Hi, guys. Um, so yeah oh sean's up there as well cool fabulous hello everybody um so yeah so just a quick reminder if you haven't already bought your ticket they are selling out quite fast it's five pound a ticket it's on our website and which is www.whitegeckocraftlounge.co.uk and um yeah there's um there's yeah there's about half gone so there's about half left okay so if you want to have a chance of winning that 200 pound then it's definitely definitely worth um worth going on and having a buying a ticket okay because they are going fast so um so what i'm just going to do is just quickly go through what we're going to be doing today so we're going to be doing some manx patchwork now manx packs which is like the one of the oldest forms of patchwork um it was um obviously developed on the isle of man it started there and um it's the the pieces that they found are, are like some of the oldest types of forms of patchwork they've ever found and because obviously the Isle of Man was isolated, it, it was an island, and getting stuff into the island was um, very difficult. Hi, Sandra. Um, they didn't, you know, scissors would have been ridiculously expensive. So nothing was cut or torn, and they certainly didn't have rotary cutters or rulers and things. So, um, you know, that's obviously a very modern um, invention. So um, they did everything by the measurements of their hands. OK, so it meant that everybody's individual blocks measured slightly differently. Um, so you would have made all your blocks just yourself. You wouldn't have wouldn't have mixed and matched because everybody's hands measured differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the camera to Drew now and then um, hopefully talk you through how to do this. OK, hi, guys. Oh, Sir James, I uh, hope you're feeling better today, honey. Um, so I'm going to flip you around. Oh, Marilyn's there, too. Hi, honey. Um, Flip you round, and there's our Drew, and he's gonna. Here we go. Hi, hi everybody. Can you see me? Cool. So Drew's gonna keep an eye on the comments and all for me as well. So, this is Manx patchwork. Okay. So it's very much like um, the traditional sort of American log cabin, um, where you know you've got they yeah, use lights and darks, but this is um, this is a modern version of it. Traditionally, they would have used any scraps of fabric they had, so you wouldn't have had this light and dark. Um, sort of look to it. Um, it would have been any fabrics they had lying down, old bits of cloth, old bits of clothing, they would have all been ripped up and reused. Okay. What you get with Manx patchwork, hopefully you can see this, is these little pleats. Okay, can you see these little pleats here? Okay. So it actually makes the fabric very thick. Okay, it's really sturdy and it's really quite warm as well. So they would have, um, they'd have used all their scraps of fabrics. Can you guys see this? Can you see that it's all pleated? Okay, it's actually a lot, lot easier to do. You can see as well, I've used red in the centre. It's my centre square. That's traditionally done. You don't have to. You can do this completely scrappy. But red was traditionally used as the centre square because it was, it represented the hearth of the, the home and you know keeping the, the home warm and, and everything okay so the block that we're actually going to do is this okay this is one block and then what i've done is i've made four blocks and joined them together now i've just made this into a little cushion cover just put an envelope back on but you can do it as a quilt you could do it as placemats you could do it as a table runner whatever you like okay 
So that so, was one I made a little while ago. So I made another one yesterday, one little block. And this time I used shirt material. Okay, so these were old shirts that I cut out the backs and the, the sleeves from and any sort of bits that I could use. Okay, they've been washed and then cut up and then cut into strips. Okay, so what we're, I'm gonna be using shirt in today, you can use anything at all, right? You can use cotton scraps, you can use jelly rolls, you can use old clothing, whatever you can get your hands on, okay? Whatever you're happy to cut up and sew with, okay? Jenny says she likes your top. Oh, thanks. Um, Sainsbury's about four years mm. ago. Cheers. <laughs> says still coughing, but all good. Oh, cool. Oh, bless you. Jackie says hi, lovely. Hi, um, guys. Carrie hi, says everybody. hello as well. Cool. Hi, Carrie. Oh, you've got lots of you with me today. Fabulous. Waiting so. with hair conditioning mask on. Ooh. I don't know what that means. A hair conditioning mask? It's a girly thing, huh? Yeah. Put it on your hair to make your hair all nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing this today so I'm going to go through the measurements with you first now you need a foundation fabric okay so I'm just using a little bit of old white calico okay and the measurement of this okay do you remember I said it was all about the measurements of your hands the measurement for your foundation square is the span of your hand so from here to here now hopefully you'll be able to see this. I'm going to try and show you on the ruler. So if I measure the span of my hand from here to here, can you see I would do an eight inch square. Now some of your spans might only be seven and a half, six and a half, it might be eight and a half if you've got big hands, but my span is eight inches. Okay, so for my foundation piece of fabric, I've cut an eight inch square. Now this can be any fabric you want okay because you're this is actually technically the back of the quilt there's no wadding or anything in these these squares so this is technically the back of the quilt so I'm just using some plain white fabric but you could use a really pretty fabric so that it's on the back whatever you like okay so that's the first bit now remember I'm going to put these instructions all the written instructions onto our website okay there'll be a two pound nominal charge but you can buy it off our website um, and I will email you a copy of these written instructions but I'm just going to go through it all today so foundation square is the span of your hand mine was eight inches okay Jenny said Jenny John Gillett says hi loving these tutorials oh Ellen. thank you hi um, your so going back to the measurements your center square which is this bit in the middle now that again could be any color I've chosen to do red because it's quite traditional so your center square is the measurement of your middle finger okay so again if I can get this ruler in the right position the measurement for my middle now excuse my nails if you can see them I haven't been able to have them done obviously because of lockdown so the measurement of my middle finger I went with three and a half okay because I'm it's nearly three and a half it might be this three it might be two and a half but my measurement is three and a half so I've cut a three and a half inch square all right so so far I've got a foundation piece which is the span and I've got a center square which is I'm going to do this the right way around so I don't swear at you <laughs> the measurement of my middle finger okay Jackie Allen says hello everyone hi guys <laughs> So the next little thing you want to do is cut your strips to go round, all right? So the strips are the measurement of your thumb. So for me, if you can see, my strips, so from the base of my thumb there to the tip of my thumb is two and a half, okay? So I've cut all my strips of shirt in fabric, but again, it could be any fabric at all. I've cut all my strips up into two and a half inches. So you can see those are two and a half inches. Right, so I'm just gonna go through those measurements once again for you. But like I said, don't worry about uh, worrying about you know writing these down or anything. We will put them all onto a written tutorial, which will be on our website, okay? So foundation, this is all the bits you need to cut. Foundation square, span of hand, for me, eight inches. Center square, that measurement there, my middle finger, which was three and a half. And then all my strips were the measurement from the base of my thumb to the tip of my thumb, which is two and a half. Okay. Again, traditionally, they wouldn't have um, used a rotary cutter or anything for this. They would have measured the fabric, nicked it with a knife, and then tore the strips, tore the fabric. 
Um, it doesn't matter if the edges are really rough because of how we're going to sew this. And I'm going to show you that in a minute, okay? So, yeah, so they would have had a, a large piece of fabric like this. Okay, they would have done this to this, nicked it there, and just ripped down. Okay, so you would have had regular size strips. So, let me move that out of the way. <coughs> First thing you want to do then, I would suggest starching your foundation fabric, okay? And starch it quite well, okay? Because you're gonna finger, uh, you're gonna iron in some um, some creases, which are gonna be your sewing guidelines, okay? So if this is nice and starched, it will hold those lines much better. So there we go, all starched and ironed. Marilyn so, says, strips how wide? The strips, the strips are your base of your finger, of your thumb. So it's your measurement, okay? And remember, you can go on, your, this will be all on the website. But, so for me, it was two and a half. So from the base of my thumb there to the tip is approximately two and a half inches, okay? So. Foundation square. You're going to fold it in half diagonally, like that, and just press in. That diagonal line so you've got a nice crisp line and then you're going to fold it the other way so I'm going to fold it corner to corner like that and fold it and iron in that crease okay so I've got if you can see this two diagonal lines now I'm going to put my center square right in the center now if I line up hopefully Drew can see that you can see this if I line the corners of the square to those diagonal lines like that can you see the corners are on those diagonal lines that will now be right dead center it has to be it's geometry my maths teacher always said you know you'll use geometry you'll use trigonometry and i was like no i won't yeah i use it all the time now <laughs> wish i'd paid more attention dot's watching hi dot hope you're well lovely okay so we've got that there can you see how that's all lined up now the next bit you're going to do is we're going to iron in some guidelines for our sewing. So I'm going to take the edge of this fabric here and fold it down to the edge of the centre square. And I'm going to iron in a line there. Okay. And then I'm going to take that line that I've just ironed and pull it down again. And again, this is another reason why we starch because it makes it so much easier to keep really nice crisp lines and can you see hopefully now you can see I've got equally spaced lines coming out from there and I'm going to do the same on this side so I'm going to take that edge and fold down to the center square like that yeah and then fold it again like that and then again turn it round and I'm going to do all four sides so I'm folding this edge to the centre square and ironing in a line Oops. and then I'm going to fold again watch fingers because it gets quite hot <laughs> it's getting really quite hot now there we go a bit of waft cool it down and then my last side here so fold that in like that fold that line in and then once again fold it down to meet that center square okay did that make sense to everybody so far everybody with me jackie says she did this in class and she loved it cool and then andrea said looking forward to doing this this later thanks for your time that's all right thank you very much for joining us so can you see now guys i've got some guidelines there okay hopefully that makes sense so i'm going to move this out of the way now because i don't need that now you don't need to do this step but i'm going to do it so hopefully it shows on the um on the screen better okay so i'm going to mark my first guideline just with a frickson pen i'm just going to mark can you see this first guideline you don't need to do this because it'll be a lot easier when it's in front of you. I'm just doing it purely so that you guys can hopefully see on the screen the guideline that I'm going to be working to first. Okay, so if you just come back up to me a minute, groups. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to start working with our strips. Now I've got three different types of um, shirt material here. You could use four, five, six, seven fabrics, whatever you like. If you want to get this light and dark look, okay, like a log cabin, you want sort of two or th you know, three or four ish, use your scraps up but of light fabrics and then a few of your dark fabrics. However, if you, you're not fussed about doing the light and dark and you just want to go with a scrappy look, okay, I'm just using three in this and I've just alternated one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? So I'm gonna start by just grabbing a piece of fabric, doesn't matter which, let me grab my scissors. Okay, I'm just gonna chop off that edge a little bit like that. And we're going to measure, this is the only measuring, and it's not measuring with a ruler and a roti cutter. I'm going to line it up against that centre square, okay? And I'm going to chop up, and it doesn't matter if it's a weeny bit too big or anything, just chop it off like that. So it's approximately the same width as the centre square. And now this is where, I've <laughs> got to thread a needle. Oh, I've got a camera. There we go, so I should have done this before really, shouldn't I? Let's thread this needle up. Everybody with me so far? Are you all okay? How's everybody doing? Please do uh, let me know if anybody is lost or you're with me so far. Comment below because Drew is reading them for me and reading them out as uh, as you're commenting. Okay. Uh, Terry said, yeah, we're with you, Sarah. Cool. Um, Bernice says, hi, Sarah, loving this. Ah, cool. Fab. Thanks, Bernice. So, I've threaded a needle up. Not too long a, a thread. You can see about that much. Okay. And it's a double thread so I'm going to go through the needle and you're just going to put a knot in the one end now I know we don't normally knot in quilting but there's method in my madness okay so I'm going to do a little double knot there Jenny says this is much clearer now and Sean said this is fascinating cool fabulous so you can see that I've now put these fabrics <coughs> now there's not really a right and a wrong side to this one but I'm going to put them right, you, if yours has got a right and wrong side, you're going to put them right sides together, okay, and just pin it in place, like that and like that. Now we're going to start sewing from the top, okay, which again I know is odd, but you'll see now that this is actually the back and you don't want any, your, this is the back of the quilt, so you don't want any knots or anything showing on the back. We're going to hide all the knots in the pleats at the front. Now I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to mark it so hopefully you can see. I'm going to start sewing about a quarter of an inch in and a quarter of an inch down. Okay. This quarter of an inch in, we're also going to be stopping about a quarter of an inch away as well. That's quite important. Okay. So you want to kind of, it doesn't have to be an exact quarter, but you want it to be, a, you, know, you want to leave that gap both ends. So hard as, is it a four inch square in the centre as I missed the start of the demo? Ah, oh, right, okay. Hi. Um, so the centre square will depend on the size of your hands. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> I will go run it through all the measurements again at the end of the tutorial for you, okay? And like I said, there will be written instructions on our website too. Um, but the, the centre square is the measurement from whatever your finger measures from the top of your middle finger to the base, okay? But um, we'll, we'll go through that for you again right at the very end, all the measurements. So we're going to start by stitching into here. And you can see I'm starting from the top. And it is a really basic little running stitch. You can see my knot is on the top. Okay. And I'm going to carry all the way along here like this. And you can see it's not particularly, you don't have to be particularly neat. It's not about, you know, these tiny, tiny little stitches. It's just a nice little excuse me nice look this is very difficult trying to hold it to camera rather than to me <laughs> it's not about neat little stitches it's just about doing a running stitch approximately quarter of an inch away from the edge all the way along okay there we go now I'm gonna <clears throat> my last little bit of the stitch I want to stop about a quarter of an inch away okay and I'm gonna push the needle through to the back and I'm going to leave that thread hanging from the back. Okay, that's quite important that you do that. So just leave the needle hanging from the back. And you can see that I've just done a little run running stitch all the way along there. And then I'm going to take the pins out. Oh, my very bent pins. <laughs> and 
I'm going to fold this edge of the fabric up to that first guideline. Do you remember the guidelines we ironed in? So I'm going to fold that up to the guideline there. Okay. If you give it, you don't have to press each time. I've got my iron here, so it's nice and easy for me to just to press. But you don't have to press each time. I would do three or four, and then I'd give it a press normally. Um, so I've folded this bottom edge up to the guideline there, and I'm going to pin that in place. Pin that in place like that. Okay. And can you see it's made a little pleat, and that knot that we started with is buried in the pleat. Okay. We're going to work our way around. So we're going to work down to this side here now. So I'm going to turn it. I'm going to grab my next piece of fabric. So I'm going to go with this blue stripey one. I'm going to line, hopefully these stripes aren't going all funny on the camera as well. So um, I'm going to line it up this time from this edge of the fabric to the edge of the centre square like that. And I'm just going to chop it off just roughly. Remember it doesn't have to be exact. That's the, one of the beauties of this method. Ooh, method is that it doesn't, nothing has to be exact because it all comes together by the guidelines you originally ironed in. So I'm gonna line that up like that. Don't worry about this, I'm keeping it in line with the centre square. If it's a little bit bigger, it all disappears into the pleating. I'm gonna pin it back into place. Okay, now this is where it's gonna feel a little bit funny. I'm gonna bring this thread, I should have done this in a colour really so you could see it. I'm going to bring this thread up so can you hopefully you can see it. I'm going to just color the thread okay so this is where the thread is at the moment and it's just here I now want to be sewing along this side of the square okay so I'm going to bring my thread back through from the back to the front like that now can you see it comes there's no stitch in here. It's come up half, almost what, a quarter of the way along that strip. Okay, that's right. Don't panic if that happens. This bit will be sewn down when we do other bits. It's supposed to come up there, all right? And then I'm just gonna whip along here, doing a little running stitch about quarter of an inch away again, all the way along. Okay, and hopefully you guys can see this. I'm trying to do it tilted to the camera for you. Okay. Now you could use a coloured thread if you wanted to because it would be de you know, decorative on the back then if you used a coloured thread because you see all the stitches on the back. Okay, so I'm going to just do a little running stitch. It's very awkward doing it to, to camera like this, but oh, now I've got a little knot. Typical. Okay. Like this, all the way along. There we go, until I get about a quarter of an inch away from the edge and I'm going to push my needle through to the back and drop it out the back again, just like we did last time. So there's my stitching. So can you see it started from here so that it looks like you've missed a bit but you haven't, that's as it should be. Pins out and then I'm going to fold this edge up to that guideline like that. I'm just going to finger press that one for now and I'm going to pin that one in place. Sheena says, very clever, and you were making it easy to follow. Thank you. Ah, oh, jolly good. That's good. Thank you. So, on to your next one. So, your next one's around here. So, I'm going to use my pale blue stripe this time. Okay. And Jenny says, now that makes sense. Bring in the thread up there. Cool. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start here, go right the way across, and then chop off the excess, just like we did on the last one. Okay. So get a non Christine asked, could I use a cotton pearl? Cotton, what, sorry? Cotton pearly. Pearly, is that Yeah, absolutely, you could use cotton pearly. That would be really nice because you see the stitch. Oh, you can't, I'm sorry, I should have used a coloured thread. Because you, you see the stitching on the back, absolutely, if you used a cotton pearly, it would give a decorative finish on the back. Okay, so I've cut that one off. I'm going to just pin this one in place. I'm trying to do this. It's a little bit khaki handed because uh, I'm trying to do it to camera for you. There we go. So I'm going to pin this one in place. I'm going to pick up my needle. Okay. And then remember, so I've come along this side of the square like that. So I want to turn a right angle. Carrie asked, have the boys got any shirts left? <laughs> no, no, they haven't. I'm going to raid their wardrobes for all their really colourful ones. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is again, I've come up and can you see it's come up 
about a quarter of an inch, quarter of a way along that row again as it should do and we're going to run and stitch all the way along this bit here now I'm going to keep going until so I can show you how to join oh, see there was me rushing I've managed to get a knot in that there we go okay it's me rushing I'm going to keep going because I want to show, show you how to join the thread okay so we're going to keep going and add in more and more strips on there we go and all the way along and you can see I'm not being overly neat it's not a you know really really precise method just go for it okay remember this was supposed to be you know a, just a nice way of using up all your scraps and then there we go so when I get to the end again I'm going to drop through to the back and leave my needle take those pins out take this piece of fabric edge and line it up on my first guideline okay and then give it just a little press get your fingers out of the way always helps <laughs> doesn't have to be pressed each time you can fit like I was saying you can finger press it and I would just pin that in place out of the way and then we're on to this side so I'm going to turn and now I'm only using three different fabrics in this okay but of course you could use as many as you like so I'm going to I'll be back on my little checked fabric this time so here we go so this time I'm going to measure from that side all the way down to there like that. Liz says this is wonderful, you're making it clear and easy to follow. Oh cool, thank you. Thank you guys for joining us. It's really cool that you, uh, you're you taking your time out and stuff to uh, to join us and learn some new things. So, And then I'm going to pin this one in place. How is everybody doing? What have you all been up to? Please do let us know, okay? So you can see I've not got a huge amount of thread left, but I'm going to bring it back up. So I've pulled down that side, that side, this side. And now I'm going to come along here. So I'm going to go along here. I'm just going to whip along here a little. You can see how quickly um, it goes. Now you want to leave yourself a decent length before you try and finish off, okay? Because you've got to tie a knot. And if you go too far, you won't be able to so I tend to finish my thread about here okay I'm just going to cut the very top by the needle so I can separate those two strands like that and then tie a knot and make sure that knot goes nice down and low against the fabric like that okay and then you can just snip that don't snip too close but just snip it off so and then I need to re-thread my needle. <coughs> Liz, Liz says it's a highlight of my day, and Heather says mine too. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, you make me go all emotional. Ha, I'll tell you what did make me go emotional. Eight o'clock yesterday, we uh, went out on the doorstep and to do the clap for carers thing, and you could hear people clapping and cheering and whistling all over Dennis. It was the most wonderful, like proper goosebumpy moment. It was fab. I. Uh, Marilyn asked, why do you not start at the beginning of each row? So, you don't start at the beginning because of how um, we're going to join them later on, okay? If you started at the beginning as well, you'd have to... Right, um, so this is where, where I started here. So I finished this row and then came along here. So I, can you see that, okay? So I'd, I'd sewn up here and then along there. In order to get to the front of the row, I'd have to come all the way over here. So I'd have a big, long... So if I put the pin, so there's the beginning of the row there. And if I push through to the back, can you see how far away it is? So I'd end up with, because this is the back of the quilt, I'd end up with a big long trail of thread, which would catch on things. And actually these bits here that aren't sewn down at the moment, when we do the next row, they get sewn down then. So we, there's no, don't worry about the fact that it hasn't been sewn down because it's, it will do eventually when you finish the whole block okay but yeah if i'd have if i'd have pulled the thread from here where i finished all the way over to the start here you'd have had this big long loop of thread okay and jenny asked could you use a weather's knot or does that not work oh uh, what sorry a weather's knot 
weavers. Um, yes, you could absolutely if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, you could do one of those if you want. Um, I just I do it like this. You know, it doesn't matter as long as it's knotted off because it's going to be buried in the pleat. So you can really do it any way you like. Okay. Um, so I finished off here where the knot was. That's where I'm not finished off. So then I'm going to start again, just a couple of stitches away on the top so that my knot is going to be buried in those pleats and it, I mean it looks messy at the moment but you won't see it because it's all all disappeared in the pleats okay and I'm going to carry on working along like that like that okay and remember drop through to the back right at the end okay like that so there's my new thread started and then I'm going to push this end up to that guideline there and steal that pin from there and go and pin that one in place so you've now completed your first round okay you've put four logs of your cabin on four strips okay let's give that a little press because it just helps keep it in place okay now we're going to work on this side so i've gone check dark stripe light stripe check so mine's going to be a dark stripe so i'm going to grab a dark stripe of fabric and i'm going to go from that side to that side and chop off okay like that and then pin this in place so i'm going to take that pin out of there so it doesn't get in my way sandra okay, says she's a bit behind place. but this is my happy hour oh <laughs> it's kind of my happy hour as well because i don't do well in self-isolation i do like to uh, like to be in contact with people so this is my way of doing it mm. which is fab and okay. wendy says some more days like this and i'll be doing this in my garden <laughs> oh yeah i know it's beautiful like that today isn't it it's really lovely the wind's quite cold but uh, it is lovely so again we're going to come up so hopefully you can see so this is where we're finishing here okay so we've finished there so i'm going to be working my way along here now so i've kind of it kind of sort of spirals out your stitching um, let me see if i can show you on this one um hopefully you can see this so i would have started here and it kind of spirals can you see And this little bit just goes a bit bigger and it spirals out and out and out and you keep going okay so i'm just going to put this next one in for you so i'm going to go like this okay and then i'm going to whip along here so What's so have you all been doing then? What's been everybody been up to? So I know quite a lot of you did the um, block with us on Wednesday and I've had some lovely pictures of those, which was really fab. So anybody else doing, been doing any other sewing? Um, we've, uh, I did some work for Hachandi yesterday, so started doing some sample making. And um, I know Kath um, Lerm has been doing some samples for me. Is oh, ow, don't stab yourself. <laughs> doesn't help. doesn't help okay and then i'm dropping down through so you can see i've just whipped along there with my running stitch dropping through to the back now this time just going back to this we've got can you see the guideline is that we've got we're working on the second guideline now like this okay it's quite important to make sure that you're going on the right guidelines okay so if it means you do mark it like i have um, that can help a lot because if you go up one too many you'll throw out your whole whole block okay so i'm going to go to that one there and pin this one in place like this Oops, so ali's been making this block this weekend Oh. Making the block this weekend, I should say. Oh, uh, being crocheting, crocheting otherwise. Oh, yeah, I saw Instagram, the little chick. He's delicious. I love him. Really, really nice. So, uh, yeah, go for it, guys. So, there we go. So, that one's in. And, and then I'm going to put... Jackie the said, one. I finished the hearts and stars. Going to be catching up on this weekend's block. This weekly block, I should say. Oh, wonderful. Oh, hearts and stars. There's a blast from the past. I haven't, I haven't thought about that one for ages. So I'd like pictures, please, Jackie. That would be lovely. Nikki really nice England said, not yet, still working hard. Oh, bless you. Are Linda you... pinched a great block. Very clever. Cool. Glad everybody's okay. Yeah, so, I mean, some of us are... Uh, you know, kind of lucky that we're in lockdown and we get to craft but there's still lots and lots of people out there that are working really hard 
So um, yeah, my my sympathies go out to you, ladies and uh, gents who are uh, who are still in work and uh, having to um, <coughs> brave uh, brave the general public. Sarah okay. finished her rainbow floor cushion yesterday. Ah, oh, fabulous! Oh, yeah, that's ready for us to take onto Chanda. So um, we are on the seventh of April. Um, I believe it eleven a.m. and two p.m. Um, and as I was saying to you guys yesterday, um, there's not um, we're not going travelling up to the studios this time. We've got to do some videos and send the videos in. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I think there's going to be a, some giggles happening there <laughs> with us trying to uh, video each other rather than uh, having a director and a floor manager telling us what to do. <laughs> but uh, it's going to be interesting. But you'll be able to see those uh, those floor pillows. Um, on that show, actually, we're doing a, a couple of different versions. So, Linda's making a block into a cushion to go onto a circular. I don't know how you pronounce that. B R G E Gabalalo. <laughs> Bargello or Bargello, whichever you like. Bargello, Bargello, Bargello. I think it's one of those either either words. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there we go. I've gone along that one, and I'm dropping through to the back again. And this is very repetitive now, ladies, okay? Because you are just going to go round and round and round and round and round. She said it's taped to the front door already. Taped to the front door? I don't know what that means. Taped to the front door? Oh, I don't know. Who, who said that? Linda. Linda. I'm not quite sure. Oh, okay. Not quite sure. <laughs> Linda Head or Linda Pinch? Linda Head. What's taped to... Linda, what have you taped to the front door? Have we missed a comment somewhere? I think we must have missed something, Drew. <laughs> Maybe she's talking to somebody else. <laughs> okay, so I'm on to my next one. So that's a blue one again. Okay. And you would just carry on working round and round the, your block. There we go. Just cut off that edge. I've got a bit of stitching on that edge. We're going to keep working round and round. Okay. So again, I'm measuring from there to there. I'm going up this bit here. And I'm going to pin that one in place. So I'm just pin that in place again. Okay, like that and like that. There we go. And then I'm going to bring this through to the from the back to the front. And as you can see, my thread's getting a weeny bit short now, so I'll have to do a new thread soon. I would I would rather wouldn't go too long on your threads, okay? Um, it's the you know because you you might think oh, I don't have to keep joining. I would um, would keep it relatively short because it will just tangle in knots, okay? So if you keep it, you know, sort of about that length each time, I know it's a bit of a pain having to keep re-threading your needle, but you'll end up picking out more knots than you will, um, you know, time-wise. It's very time-consuming when the thread knots. Um, you could use some thread magic if you really wanted to, but I would just, just keep it short. They always say from the tip of your fingers to your elbow, is the the length the maximum length you should work with okay so of course that's doubled with this because it's a double thread okay so i'm going to get towards the end of this thread and a couple more okay and then i'm going to chop it off like that and if i split that up i should be able to just yeah, and again, like Jen said earlier, you can do whatever you, knot you want here. This is just how I do mine. I've just found that easier than messing around with them. Just do a couple, a little knot like that, just to hold it all down. Chop off that excess, and then we're away again. So is this all making sense so far, ladies? Okay, I would just keep working my way round, um, round around the centre square until you get to the very edge. Okay, so I'm going to, I'll just finish this block and then I'll get the completed one I've got in for you. And hopefully I can show you how to join them. Because you would make lots and lots of these blocks and join them. So if, you know, like with the original one that I did, it was just a cushion cover, so I made four of them. But there's nothing stopping you making this to a whole quilt or some placemats or a table runner, whatever you like really. Okay, so there we go. So starting again on the top. Kate. So my... Kate's been poorly, so she's had to catch up with her chores and knit a beret for her granddaughter. Oh, nice. And has been loving the demos, have lots of projects to get on with now. Cool. cool I'm glad. Yeah, you've got to keep, gotta keep occupied, haven't you? But, oh, I like a beret. Then... I'm not great with hats, mind. I'm really not great with hats. I don't look, don't really suit them. So uh, 
But, um, but yeah, I do like a berry. <laughs> And then Jenny said, it's, uh, yes, it is much more sense than what I've been do- reading online. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, hopefully that is... Uh... Okay, so can you can you see? So there we go. We're working our way around the fabrics like that. Okay. So I've gone three and two, three. So my next one would be this pale blue one. And you're going to keep working round and round your block. Okay, so to this line, and then my next row would be to the third grid line, and the final row, if I just move this one out of the way, the final row you can see here gets pushed up to meet the edge of the foundation. So the final line that you'll fold into, so this was my third line there, and then my, the final line that I'm folding to is actually the edge of the foundation square. Okay, so you get once you've got that far, that's your block actually completed. Okay, and one of the reasons, remember, I was saying um, somebody asked me earlier why you leave a quarter of an inch at the ends, it's so that you can join your blocks. Okay, so we're going to pretend that this block is finished. Okay, that it looks like this. Frankly, I didn't have time to make two <laughs> last yesterday. Okay, so we're going to pretend that these blocks are finished, and how this is how you would join them. All right. You're going to flip back this one, okay? And you're going to put them together like this, okay? So this one would have the same. This one, in fact, actually, if I pin one there, so it looks like it's... There we go. If I just do this a second. I'm going to just hack that off for you. And if I pin it as if it's sewn... Okay? Jane asks, can it be done with a sewing machine rather than hand-sewn? Um... You could do it with a sewing machine. Yeah, I, d I don't see why not. I think it would be quite difficult to actually, I suppose, you, you know, I suppose you you would just, um, blah, 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 find my words. So instead of having a continuous thread on the back, you'd see the machine stitches just from there to there and there to there, etc. cetera. So um, yeah, you could do it on a machine. I've not tried it, to be honest. Might be worth having a little go. Um, but yeah, to be honest, I, I, it's one of those things that I quite like. It's very quick as well as hand sewing. You know me, guys. I'm all about the machine. If it can be done on the machine, I do it on the machine. You know, I don't particularly enjoy hand quilting, although I do do it. But this I actually find quite um, meditative, if that's the right word. I could never say that word. Um, because it's quite gentle, but it's really quick. And because I'm so impatient with my sewing, that genuinely block genuinely took me about 45 minutes to do start to finish. Um, you know, so it was a film on the TV and, and do it. So, but have a go on the machine. Have a go and see if it works. I'm not, I'm not quite sure whether you would get the same feel, but it's definitely worth trying. So I'm just going to pin this one in place as if I've already sewn it. Okay, actually, let me pin it that way for you, so that we can I can show you how you would join the blocks. But again, remember this full written instructions with all these joining bits as well will be on our website, okay? So if we imagine that that is, I'll just, okay, just as a make do, okay? So we're gonna imagine that that is the edge strip just like this, okay? So what you would do is you would pull this one back out of the way and I would just pin it, just get it out of the way. And the same with this one so that you've exposed those edges, okay? And then you're gonna put them wrong sides together and you're gonna line up the edges of the foundation fabric like that, okay? And you would then stitch quarter of an inch all the way down here, okay? So you're gonna stitch a quarter of an inch all the way down there, okay? Making sure that you're only stitching the foundation, the foundation squares. So again, I'm going to pin that so that it looks like it's been sewn because we haven't got time to sew all of it. Okay, so I'm going to pin that as if I've sewn it like that. Oh, uh, don't stick a pin in your finger. And then when you pull them apart, okay, like that, you're going to release this one here of the and fold that back up like this. Okay, and release that one there and fold that one back up. Okay, 
Oh, no, I'm sorry. I've just realised I've completely told you wrong about that. <laughs> sorry about that. There we go. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to do it the other way. Oh, there we go. Okay, I'm going to put them right sides together. You're going to stitch down them that way, okay, so that when you open them back up, okay, they will look like that. And then you fold this over and over again like that. This is very, I should have, I should have done a separate one for you. Sorry, ladies, I've lost my thing there. Okay, so you're going to stitch them like this, okay, and then... They will end up looking like that and once they're stitched you then fold it over to tuck those raw edges in and you slip stitch down okay i've got full written instructions for this I, it's very difficult to do without this one being finished okay so don't panic too much if that didn't make sense so this one would be like this okay like that let me just see if i can show actually i might be able to show you on the inside of this one let me show you on the inside of this one so your the back of your so obviously I've made this into a cushion. The back of it, okay. Can you see these lines here? Okay, that's where I've joined them together. Okay, and then you fold the top one over and you just slip stitch it stitch it into place. Okay, did that make sense? Sorry, that was really a little bit garbled that bit because I lost concentration for a second. That one caught. Oh, that one caught that one in there. Okay, and on the front. You would see, you can see that this is where it got joined, okay? So you put them right sides together and stitch, and then you fold that one side back over on itself. I will put, they were, there are written instructions for this, okay? And it's really easy to see because it's got step by step um, uh, on how to join them, okay? The step by step photos. Heather um, asks, is that like a French scene? Yes, kind of, yes. Yeah, like a French seam in dressmaking because you're going to be turning over and then when you put it through to the back, there's a little flap which you fold under and slip stitch into place. Kind of, yes, a bit like French seams. But um, <coughs> sorry, that didn't work very well, did it this time? Let me just see if I can try and get this to to work for you. Oh, hang on. Let's put that one there like that, like it's been sewn. There we go. Right, any other questions? I'm going to, just while I'm trying to, get this so that I can show you properly um, I'm just going to run through those measurements again so your foundation piece was the span of your hand so for me that was eight inches but it could be any sort of size okay it could be seven and a half it's whatever the span of your hand is like that okay the center square in the center there obviously because it's the center square the center <laughs> square is the measurement from the tip of your middle finger down to the base okay so for mine that was three and a half but it could be any of them okay it could be you know you could have a little really long fingers it could be four it could be three two and a half but approximately three and a half okay and for the strip measurement it's your, the base of your thumb so from the, the tip of your thumb down to the base of your thumb there okay so for me that was two and a half inches so that's the measurements you need for actually doing the square okay and then for joining it hopefully right okay I'll get this out of the way so <laughs> So that would be like that, okay? So you're gonna put them right sides together. So you're gonna pin, pin this bit out of the way like this, okay? There we go. And you're gonna put them right sides together. There we go, that's what I did. I did, did the wrong bit for you. Okay, and you're gonna stitch down here. It's gonna try and pin that. Hang on a second. Pin that as if it's stitched, okay? So you've got them right sides together, not wrong sides, right sides together. That's where I told you wrong earlier. You've stitched that, and then when you set open them up, okay, <clears throat> I know that looks a mess, but it will work. When you open it up, it does that, and then this one goes over like that, and you slip stitch that down. Hopefully that made sense. Like I said, written instructions on the website. How's everybody doing? Okay, it does. Is everybody want me to run through any of that again for you? Um, hopefully, if you watch it from the start and sew along with me, once you've cut all your pieces, um, it will make a little bit more sense. But if you want written instructions, check out the website. Um, also on the website, remember there is the little prize draw giveaway. Oh, I say little. It's not little. It's little. It's two hundred pounds worth of stuff. Okay, and there are quite a few. Um, 
well not quite a few about half the destinations still left to go um tomorrow i'm going to do a little bit about quilt as you go okay just about how um, i've had a request for how to join blocks quilt as you go so because if you're having to do quilts obviously at home now in lockdown and you haven't got the space to to put a big quilt through your machine quilt as you go is a really nice easy way to do so it's going to be again i'll be back at one o'clock um any any questions there drew anything anybody's Je jenny said uh, that makes sense thank you sarah cool and sandra said flat and foul scene that's a dressmaking term i believe i, I imagine my mummy would know what that is but i don't know what that is but Sandra's a really good dressmaker, so I'm going to go, yes, absolutely, Sandra. <laughs> um, and then Carrie said, brilliant, thanks, Sarah. Cool, good, I'm glad. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. So that's Manx Patchwork. Like I said, I will put the written tutorial on the website, um, and tomorrow we're going to be back at one, as as usual, um, for Quilt As You Go. So I'm going to show you how to join some Quilt As You Go blocks so that you can play with your decorative stitches you can play with your free motion and you're not struggling to get a whole quilt through your machine okay so have a good friday everybody stay safe stay home and i will see you tomorrow bye